Hello, I'm Dale Leeson, and this is a quick start guide for the DFT Fringe, the successor to OpenFringe. If you're familiar with OpenFringe, then a lot of this will be familiar to you. However, some things work a little differently, so I hope it will be beneficial to you to watch this and other videos that I have recorded in the help section. For detailed information on each of the following steps, please see the other help videos that I have uh, recorded. DFT Fringe is a program used to analyze interferograms for telescope optics, and I assume you already have interferograms stored as images on your computer. So let's get started. First, we want to load an interferogram. You can do that with this load button here. I'll pick an interferogram. Next, I need to outline the mirror inside the interferogram. I start by pressing over on the left-hand side of the mirror and expand over to the right side. I can move up and down to center the outline on the mirror. And when I have the adjustment just right, then I can press the Done button over here on the right in the Interferograms Tools menu. The next thing I need to do is change the center filter in the DFT display so that the edge of the blue circle just touches the uh, side lobe in the DFT. You can touch either one. doesn't matter. They're both symmetric. When I'm satisfied with that, I can click on Compute Surface. And at that point, we're done. It looks like when I outlined the mirror, I didn't quite get it quite right. And that's causing this high region here. But otherwise, that's just how easy it is to uh, analyze an interferogram using the new DFT fringe. We can see here is all the Strel information over here on the left hand side. The, the uh, Zernike values, the best fit conic. In the center we have a profile that like open fringe you can change the uh, angle of the profile through the mirror. We have a three-dimensional view of the mirror. We have a contour plot of the mirror. And um, we can change the blur radius that blurs the surface detail. Here it is unblurred completely, or smooth instead of blurred, I really mean. And I turn the Gaussian blur radius smoothing back on. And I can make it bigger, the blur radius larger, like that. I can also, from the Files menu, save all of this to a PDF for a final report. Thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful.